Hey everybody and welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about saving the genre and revamping past heroes. And we have now entered the Silver Age of Comics. So, in 1956, DC Comics was struggling to find new concepts that might attract readers. The company introduced a tryout title called Showcase, and the first three showcases flopped, which made editor Julie Schwartz suggest that the company revives The Flash. This suggestion was given the okay to go, despite other editors still felt sour from the demise of superheroes several years earlier. So, The New Flash. Julius, or Julie Swartz, like I just mentioned, steered the project on revamping The Flash in a fresh direction. Jay Garrick, who was The Flash, that was his human identity, during the comic's golden age was ignored for a time. A new character, which was police scientist Barry Allen, obtained super speed in his initial excursion in Showcase Number 4. The Flash was given a more sporty costume, and The Flash mixed action, style, and imagination, which was an attractive alternative to DC's other series. The sec the success, sorry, the success of the new Flash was a vital moment in comic book history. Without the success of the Flash, publishers may have given up on superheroes, leading the genre into extinction. So the new Green Lantern and the introduction of the Justice League. Julie Swartz went on to reintroduce the Green Lantern, and just like Julie did with The Flash, he took the name of the hero and power, which was the ring, and premiered a new version of the character in Showcase Number 22, which was September to October in 1959. Schwartz then took an ambitious step in The Brave and the Bold number 28 in 1960 by combining The Flash and Green Lantern along with Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and the Martin Manhunter into a team called the Justice League of America. The JLA was a huge hit and Schwartz went on to both Hawkman and Adam in 1961. He also published The Flash of Two Worlds in The Flash number 123, which he introduced the concept of a parallel world called Earth 2, where the original Flash still operated while the newly updated Flash existed on Earth 1. So now Batman has a new look. Batman and Detective Comics also went through a time where they were going to be cancelled. Batman was turned over to Julie Schwartz by DC's editorial director Erwin Donefield, telling Julie to save the Cape Crusader. Julie had realized that Batman had strayed away from the original roots of the character and Julie returned the elements of mystery to Batman Tales, incorporating clues into the stories, having the reader solve the mystery along with Batman. Julie also changed Batman's appearance by keeping the Cape Crusader's costume and adding a yellow oval to his chest insignia, stimulating the look of the sky illuminating Batman's signal. The Fantastic Four. So the Justice League was giving out really strong sales in 1961 that it got bragging rights to DC publisher Jack Leibowitz during a golf game with Martin Goodwin, who was the publisher of Marvel Comics. Along with DC, Marvel also needed some kind of boost, so Goodman directed Stan Lee, his staff editor and writer, to create a group of superheroes to compete with the Justice League. Stan Lee actually had considered resigning from Marvel at the time of Goodman directing him to create a new group of characters, but Stan Lee's wife encouraged him to stay. Stan Lee wanted to write stories that wouldn't insult the intelligence of an older reader. Stories with interesting characterization, more realistic dialogue, and plots that hadn't been recycled a thousand times before. The result of all of this was Marvel's The Fantastic Four number one in November 1961. This team was made up of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, Sue Storm, The Invisible Girl, Johnny, The Human Torch, and Ben Grimm, the thing. Each character had personality quirks that frequently caused the Fantastic Four into verbal and physical conflict, but they did set aside their differences in times of conflict. So now going off the Fantastic Four, I'm going to show you guys the origin story of the Fantastic Four, and I hope you guys enjoy that, and I will see you tomorrow for our last lesson. 
Marvel's first superhero team, comic readers were introduced to the Fantastic Four through their leader, Mr. Fantastic, otherwise known as Reed Richards. Richards was presented as a brilliant scientist with an unparalleled knowledge of physics who had been working tirelessly to create the first spacecraft that could take astronauts beyond the reaches of the moon. Unfortunately, the government suddenly decided to cut funding to his project, even though his ship was finished and ready for launch. Unwilling to see his years of research and work go to waste, Richards decided to move up the launch before the decision could formally be announced. Requiring a team to accompany him, he invited several friends to join him as his crew. These included his girlfriend Susan Storm, her brother Johnny Storm, and former college roommate turned US test pilot Ben Grimm. Despite his moved up timetable, Richards once again hit a roadblock when fears over cosmic rays caused the spaceport to scrap his flight. Willing to take the risk, Reed and his crew waited until later that evening to sneak back into the ship and take off before the military could intercept them. Pushing through the Earth's atmosphere, they were immediately struck by a massive cosmic ray storm. Penetrating the hull, it made Richards and his crew too ill to continue the mission. This prompted them to return to Earth by making an emergency crash landing. Surviving the touchdown, they each discovered that the cosmic rays had changed their bodies. Sue found herself able to become invisible and would later develop the ability to create force fields. Ben's skin had become heavy and stone-like, giving him a monstrous appearance and increased strength. Reed's body had become fully elastic and Johnny gained the ability to burst into flames as well as fly. Realizing that the rays had altered their atomic structures, Reed proposed to the team that they had been given incredible power and should use it to help mankind. Individually, they picked out the superhero names Mr. Fantastic, The Invisible Woman, The Human Torch, and The Thing. Adopting a base of operations within the Baxter Building skyscraper, the team made use of Richard's knowledge of science to create tools to help them. These included special outfits that complemented and adapted with their powers, as well as the flying Fantastic Car, which could split apart and be driven by each member individually. Meanwhile, they began using their powers to fight crime and defend the planet from countless dangers. These included aliens called the Skrulls, their arch-nemesis Dr. Doom, and the planet-devouring entity called Galactus. They even revealed their real identities to become celebrities, taking credit for their many heroic deeds and prompting the public to both admire and distrust them. A unique, if lovingly dysfunctional superhero family with an unstable mix of personalities, the Fantastic Four have continued to appear in various media over the years, including crossovers and solo adventures. These include several animated series and two big-budget Hollywood blockbusters. The Fantastic Four have likewise become a staple of popular culture, being candidly parodied in Pixar's The Incredibles and The Venture Brothers animated comedy series. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce my lovely wife, Sally. Whatever are you doing out of your room during work hours?